How toothpaste is made in factories. Toothpaste used for brushing one's teeth can be traced back to around 4,000 years ago. The embraces that were utilized to clean teeth did not resemble modern toothpaste until the middle of the 19th century. The removal of stains from people's teeth was the primary preoccupation of those times, and people turned to harsh and often even poisonous chemicals to achieve the same. The first modern toothpaste was developed to help remove foreign particles and food things from the teeth, in addition to cleaning the teeth themselves. Jars were the primary delivery method for toothpaste in its early days on the market to end users. In the early half of the 20th century, chalk was a common abrasive that was employed. In this video, we will have a look at how toothpaste is manufactured in factories. The elements are in their raw form. These components are always included in toothpaste. Bimers, abrasives, sudzers, humectants, flavors, specific additions, sweeteners, fluorides, tooth whiteners, a preservative, and water. Toothpaste is made more viscous by binders. They stop the solid and liquid components from becoming separated, which is especially helpful during storage. They also affect the rate of flavor release and product dispersal, the appearance of the toothpaste ribbon on the toothbrush, and the ability to rinse the toothpaste off of the toothbrush. Caria gum, bentamite, sodium alginate, methyl cellulose, carrageenan, and magnesium aluminum silicate are all examples of binders. Abrasive materials are used to remove plaque and release particles stuck to teeth by scrubbing the surface of the teeth. The amount of opacity that the paste for gel has is also affected by the presence of abrasives. The paste consistency as well as its price and flavor may be altered by the use of abrasives. Some abrasives are more abrasive than others, which might cause needless damage to the tooth enamel when used with certain products. Hydrated silica, also known as softened silica, calcium carbonate, also known as chalk, and sodium bicarbonate, generally known as baking soda, are the types of abrasives that are utilized the most frequently. Other types of abrasives include sodium metaphosphate hydrated alumina, calcium sulfate, tricalcium phosphate, and debasic calcium phosphate. Each abrasive has slightly different cleaning qualities than the others and the final product may use a combination of those abrasives. Surfactants are the same thing as sudzers, which are also known as foaming agents. They do this by lowering the surface tension of the water, which results in the formation of bubbles. Foam is created when many bubbles come together. The use of sudzers can assist in the removal of debris from teeth. In most cases, a mixture of an organic alcohol or a fatty acid with an alkaline metal is what is referred to as a sudzer. Sodium lauryl sulfate, sodium lauryl sulfoacetate, diactyl sodium sulfosuccinate, sulfurate, sodium lauryl sarcosinate, sodium stereofumarate, and sodium stereolactate are all examples of common sudzers. How exactly does one go about making toothpaste? To begin answering the question, how do you make toothpaste? The easiest place to start is with the components that make up the product. Abrasives, fluoride, and detergent are the three essential components that make up the majority of modern toothpaste. Although all three of these things sound more like they should be in your washing machine than in your mouth, they each serve a crucial function in maintaining good oral health. Abrasive ingredients can make up anywhere from 8% to 20% of a typical tube of toothpaste. They work by polishing your teeth to remove plaque. Plaque is a coating of bacteria that forms on your teeth as a result of the sugars and starches in the food you eat. Plaque can give your teeth a fuzzy feeling. This is exactly what the abrasives are working to get rid of. Fluoride is hypothesized to play a role in the production of dental enamel. In addition to its role in preventing cavities, fluoride levels in toothpaste can range anywhere from 1,000 to 1,100 parts per million in the United States, although they are typically higher in European countries, like the United Kingdom. Detergents, often known as surfactants, are the substances that cause foam to form when you put toothpaste in your mouth. Although not all toothpaste produce foam, doing so is thought to facilitate a more even and thorough distribution of the paste. It is believed that sodium lauryl sulfate SLS, which is the most prevalent kind of detergent found in toothpaste, also possesses antibacterial properties. Antibacterial agents such as triclosan or zinc chloride may also be found in toothpaste. Other ingredients include fluoride. Essential oils such as peppermint oil are typically used to impart flavor to food. Glycerin is added to toothpaste both as a natural sweetness and as a component that helps the toothpaste retain its wetness. In addition to that, cellitol is an effective plaque remover. Now that we have a list of the components, the next question is how the toothpaste is made. How does one go about making toothpaste? Toothpaste is produced in massive quantities in factories utilizing highly automated procedures, which are supervised by employees. Although some manufacturers may perform specific jobs by hand such as boxing toothpaste, the great majority of the work is done by machines. Some companies may still perform these tasks by hand. So how exactly does the production of toothpaste take place in these factories? 
First, the components are gathered from their respective locations and brought to the facility, where they undergo quality inspections before being stockpiled in large silos and made ready for usage. The crew uses barcodes to keep track of the batches of materials and toothpaste that they produce, and they meticulously monitor every element of the process. After that, the ingredients are given a weight. This is typically done manually as well as mechanically to guarantee the highest possible level of precision. The mixing process comes after that. In specialized vats, where the temperature and humidity are carefully monitored and controlled, the constituent parts are combined. The liquid components, such as water and glycerin, are often the first ones to be added to the mixture. After that comes the drier components. After the raw materials have been brought into the factory, the individual components are then subjected to both manual and mechanical weighing procedures. This guarantees that the amounts of the various substances are correct. After that, all of the constituent parts are combined. In most cases, the glycerin water mixture is completed before anything else. In the mixing vat, each of the components is thoroughly combined. Both the temperature and the humidity of the vat are under close observation. Flavorings, colors, and detergents are the final components to be added to the mixture for the toothpaste. To reduce the amount of foam that is produced, detergents are slowly combined. How exactly does one go about making tube toothpaste? Tubes of toothpaste go through a rigorous cleaning procedure that includes blowing and vacuuming to get rid of any dust and other debris that may have accumulated in them. After that, the caps are sealed, and that just leaves the empty portion of the tube to be filled. A specialized filling machine brings together the paste and the tube. Before pumping the paste into each tube from above as they move along the conveyor belt, this machine spins the tubes into position so that they are properly aligned. Have you ever pondered the process by which the colored stripes on some toothpaste are created? To begin, the various hues are made individually, then each batch is given its unique dose of the right color and chemical. In addition, they are kept apart right up until the point in the tube where they are brought together. Therefore, the machines that are utilized in these procedures will each have their unique nozzle, and they will inject all of the colors at the same time. How is it that toothpaste is made? Wrapping up. The date and location of manufacture as well as the brand are stamped on tubes that have been filled. After passing all the final inspections, they are then ready to be packaged and sent off. That brings us to the end. The solution to the question, how is toothpaste made, is from the beginning to the end. It is my sincere hope that doing so has caused you to crack a grin. Have a good time brushing. So this is the end of our today's video, do you like it? Kindly give your valuable response in our comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting and informative videos.